So lock you, the video's cutting out. I need to get storage on this phone. But anyway, I was going into the military bases. I don't know where it cut off. But the, I typed in, how many military bases does the United States have? And it says, the Pentagon stated in 2013 there are around 5,000 bases total, with around 600 of them overseas. And this is where you get that um, that verse that says, He doesn't keep, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell. Because the Edomite, he, like I say, he's got... And like I said, it's a ballpark, 600 military bases overseas, meaning in different countries, okay? And it's classified information, so they're not even giving you the exact number or location of these military bases. But this is uh, showing you in this verse, it says, Who enlargeth his desire as hell, because he's greedy, he never gets enough. And it says, Neither keepeth at home. He doesn't just have his military bases in his nation. No, Esau has military bases all over the world, all over the planet, right? Verse 6, Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe unto him that increases that which is not his, how long unto him that ladeth himself with thick clay. So destruction unto him who... who uh, um, Increases which is not his Because that's what this this So-called white man does He goes all over the planet earth Invading countries You know And pushing his policies On these different Foreign countries Increasing You know Which is not his Right Verse 7 Just like he did with America His whole his whole so-called nation, um, United States of America, what he do? He 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 uh, obtained it by uh, murder, rape, you know, and, and just ravishing, you know. He did it with violence. That's how he took. He stole the land here in America. Verse seven. They shall not, or shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee, and awake that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them. Booties goes into spoils, all right? So, let's keep reading. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for the violence of the land and of the city and of all that dwell there. Woe unto him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house that he may set his nest on high and he may be delivered from the power of evil all right and who sets their nest on high that's the edomite right that's why when he's he did the uh, deception of the so-called landing on the moon what was his quote he said the eagle has landed and eagles were well, they they're birds with nests so that's what this is talking about. He may set his nest on high. I mean, he, he set his nest, which it's a lie, but he, he, he has deceived the world into thinking that he put his, uh, his flag on the moon. Verse 10, Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and hast sinned against thy soul. For the stone shall cry out of the wall and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establish a city by iniquity. And this literally, this verse right here, 12. Buildeth a town by blood and establish a city by iniquity. This is what uh, the Europeans did when they came to the Americas. All right. And just through the spirit, let me grab this. Because they, they destroyed... The Americas, they came to the Americas, conquered the indigenous people. I think it's this one. And, you know, specifically, I'll go to Gad, which are the so-called Native Americans. It says, Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. All right, Gad are the so-called Native Americans. It says, a troop shall overcome him. Who were those troops? It was those conquistadors. It was those European uh they call them explorers, but they were conquerors, right? That's the troop that overcame Gad. But the Lord, he, he always is balanced. He says, but he shall overcome at the last. Because, you know, you so-called Gadites, or I'm sorry, you Gadites, who are so-called Native Americans, 
you're going to be, you're going to have a great number of the nation, of, of the tribe of Gad, which is going to have salvation going up in those chariots when that waster is present. Those nuclear missiles, right? So Habakkuk 2, 13, it says, Behold, is it not of Yahweh of the hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire, and the people shall weary themselves for very vanity? For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. All right, and it's starting to do it right now. The knowledge of Yahweh and the glory of Yahweh is starting to uh, cover the earth with because the prophets are on the scene. Right? This, this reminds me of Deuteronomy, is it 32 and 2? My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as upon, or I'm, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. See that? The doctrine is going to drop like rain. Yahweh's doctrine is dropping like rain because the prophets are on the scene and we're teaching all over the planet Earth. You, especially GMS. You have different camps all over the world who are under the banner of GMS. Um, let's see. Habakkuk. Where are we at? and 15 woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink that puttest thy bottle to him and that makest him drunken also and that mayest look on their nakedness so this is again this is this is uh, describing the Edomite because when you look at the ancient biblical maps um Israel, Judah, you know, northern, northern and southern kingdom, our neighbors were the Edomites. They were the neighboring countries, along with the Moabites, you know, these heathen nations, were neighbors to, to our, the Israelites. When you look at an ancient map, okay? And it says he gives his neighbor drink, meaning he gives him that wine, that doctrine, that false doctrine. So he's like, destruction to them who give his neighbor drink, and put thy bottle to him and make us him drunken also. Our, our people right now are drunk off the, 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 you know, the strong drink, the, the false wine, right? The Babylonian juice. Our people, I'm talking about the Israelites, you know, you're busy worshiping uh, gods that your fathers never knew. Like it tells you in Deuteronomy, all right? Like our forefathers, they didn't know nothing about, they didn't know no damn Jesus Christ. That didn't come about until the, the like, I believe, like the late 1400s, the Renaissance, right? The ancient, our ancient ancestors, they knew Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. They didn't know no fucking Jesus Christ. So that's that strong drink that our neighbors gave us. It says that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Because when you're when you forsake the truth, meaning when you forget, you know, your true power, your true God, Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai, when you forget the Father and the Son, then now you know it becomes you become naked. And, and naked means it basically means like transgressing the laws. Like Adam and Eve, they were naked, it was a metaphor. It wasn't that they were butt naked. It was because they were literally transgressing. This They were sinning. Right? They fucked up, Adam and Eve. So it was a metaphor that they became naked, meaning shamed. And you should be ashamed for not knowing or even considering the laws of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Verse 16. Thou art filled with shame for glory, you see? Naked, that's shame. Thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of Yahweh's right hand shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. And that's what you have nowadays. You have our people, it's a shameful spewing. You know? That's, there's no glory in our people anymore. Our people are a, a once a noble vine, and now uh, in Jeremiah, 
calls our people a, dege a degenerate plant. You know, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 2.21. Yet I planted thee a noble vine, holy a right seed. Talking about the Israelites. How then art thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? See, and our people are strangers, meaning they're Gentiles. Yahweh is saying, You're, how'd you become a strange vine unto me? How'd you become a Gentile unto me? The word Gentile means stranger. All right? You're degenerates. When you're not, when you're not following your true power, your true God, Yahweh and His Son, Yahweh Shai, when you're not in that fold, you're, uh, you're literally a, a degenerate. And you're, you're a strange, a stranger, a.k.a. Gentile. All right? Even the people of our nation are Gentiles, okay? Basically, in the book of uh, Maccabees, it explains that, how our people became, you know, in a Gentile state of mind. And now you have in America, our people are all in a Gentile state of mind. And there's a remnant who's coming back into the truth. The elect is coming back into the truth. And the understanding that we are the Israelites and the understanding that we do need to consider the laws and the ways of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, okay? Habakkuk 2, 17 says, For the violence of Lebanon shall cover thee, and the spoil of beasts which made them afraid because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land, and of the city, and of all that dwell therein. What profiteth the graven image that the maker thereof hath graven it? the molten image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusts therein to make dumb idols right so that's what these christians and these catholics and all these fake religions that's what they've done and what profit does it do for you israelites you don't have no you don't have any um <clears throat> so Yeah, these other nations, these, I mean, not these other nations, these other religions. What profit are you Israelites getting out of it? It's no profit. The ones who don't repent, the ones who don't believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, you have no profit. There's, no, there's nothing good that comes out of these false doctrines. All they do is enlarge hell. The scripture speaks on that. that the the so-called white man enlargeth hell. Part of it is with his false doctrines, and hell is a. Uh, it means the grave. So our people are, are are literally just in a dead state, dead state of mind, because they don't have the truth. They don't understand the Bible. They don't understand the truth. All right. So you have no profit. There's no profit. I'm talking to you Israelites. There's no profit in pagan Christianity there's no prophet and I'm not talking about prophet as in a, a prophet of the Lord I'm talking about a prophet P-R-O-F-I-T you're not gonna there's nothing good that comes out of these uh, false doctrines that you that you you know you, you believe to be true because you're deceived but the scriptures tells you we're reading it what profiteth the graven image that the maker thereof hath graven it? The molten image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto him that saith to the wood, Awake, to the dumb stone, Arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. So these idols, these, whether it's a, a statue or a an image, a graven image, or if it's a, you know, the wood represents Christianity, the stone represents um, the, the, the Muslims, the nation of, you know, Islam, the Islamic faith. Our people are caught up in both those false religions, which one, like I say, the wood, Christianity, and stone. These are not our religions. We, we're not pagan Christians. We're not the Israelites, we should not be in the modern Christian church. You should not be uh, following the Muslim religion, which they, they, you know, pray on that stone, which is shaped like a, uh, 
a woman's vagina. All right, because it goes into woman worship. And these were prophecies and, and curses that Yahweh said would come upon us if we didn't follow His laws. Let's let's get that. Let me see if I can find it. Right here, boom. Deuteronomy twenty-eight thirty-six. It says. Yahweh shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone, meaning Christianity and uh, Muslim religion. Those are not those are not our faiths. Those are not the true doctrine of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Those are doctrines to set up to bring you to enlarge the, the grave, all right? And actually, let's get that, because I keep bringing it up. Hell enlarges, in, hell enlarges itself with those, uh, those uh, false doctrines, with those false religions. Let's see, Isaiah 5 and 14. Let me just pull it in my Bible. <clears throat> Isaiah... 5 and 14 it says therefore hell hath enlarged herself well let's read 13 it says therefore my people are gone into captivity talking about you Israelites because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst okay because you had a period of time when our, our, our people our men our leaders they didn't understand the truth. They were wicked, so Yahweh, he separated himself from our people. And that's why we went into captivity. That's why our people don't have no knowledge of this truth. Walking around calling himself a Christian, you know. Which we are the original Christians, but we're, we're not like the pagan Christian church of today. The modern pagan Christian church. That is not, that's not the truth. That, that's all based on lies Like we read earlier in Habakkuk Teacher of lies And you have no knowledge You Israelites, you so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans You don't have no knowledge about this Bible Because why? Every time you've ever been taught Or anything spiritual or religious came up It was like, oh, Jesus Christ Oh, I believe in Jesus uh, you know, Or oh, it's, it's all about the, you know, I'm a Christian no, you, our people should not be in the modern Christian church. It teaches you nothing but lies and it's deception. Deception and lies is the power of Esau. That's one of his powers. Two of his powers if you want to get technical. But it says in verse 14, Therefore, because remember, our people are in captivity and have no knowledge. So because of that, and they're in those wood and stone, right? Worshipping wood and stone. So this is what happens, Isaiah 5 and 14. Therefore hell, meaning the grave, hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he shall that rejoiceth shall descend into it. All right? So you're devoured, you Israelites are devoured by these heathen religions, heathen nations' religion. These heathen nations were programmed by Yahweh Bashim Yahshai to devour you and to deceive you. And that's why you don't understand the Bible. And that's why you get mad at the, at the Lord's true prophets when we teach you the truth. Because you're so caught up on the lies that you've, that you've uh, have been uh, embedded into your head. Alright? So let's get to 19. It says... Woe unto him that saith to the wood, Arise, it shall teach. Okay, yeah, what you going to do? You're going to get a, a wooden cross with uh, Jesus Christ on it and, and say, Oh, teach me something. Wake up. You see? No, that ain't going to happen. So woe unto him that saith to the wood, Awake to the dumb stone. Arise, it shall teach. Like, yeah, the, the stones ain't going to teach you. Arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in it in the midst of it. Meaning there's no life in these false doctrines. 
whether it be the Muslim faith, whether it be the modern Christian faith. There's no life in those churches, right? Those are false churches set up by the heathen to devour you Israelites, right? And devour by taking you to the grave because they give you a belief system that is not, it's, it's contrary to what the Holy Scriptures is. Doesn't even give you the, the, the true names. You ain't gonna get the true name of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai um, in the Christian Church. No, they're just gonna be calling him, teaching you, calling, calling the Father God and the Son Jesus, which that's that's not the truth right there. Last verse. But Yahweh is in His holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before Him. All right. And really his holy temple right now and he, who he's in are his men, all right? Men teaching this truth is the holy temple. So let's grab that real quick in Revelation 21.3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And tabernacle means church or temple. So behold, the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them, and be their power, Yahweh. You see that? So let's get that last verse in Habakkuk, which is 20, 2 and 20. But Yahweh is in his holy temple, meaning he's in his men. The men who are in this truth, Yahweh, we speak his words. We're not speaking our own words. Or we're not speaking deception or lies. There's no uh, guile found in our mouth, which guile goes back into uh, in trickery or deception, gimmicks. We don't do that. We teach you according to uh, according to the the way it's written, with with understand knowledge and understanding. All right. I'll close out on this verse. Revelation 14 and 5, and he's talking about his prophets. And in their mouth was found no guile. When you go into that word guile, that means trickery, deception, lies. For they are without fault before the throne of Yahweh, the Most High. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and close out on that. I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rukakudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, when acknowledge the Akiam, who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom to the, you brothers of the elect. Shalom.